Captain Dave here again. I just wanted to kind of discuss something that's been on my mind because I was talking to my, I was talking to my past customers uh, just the other day on Facebook. Croakers and big trout. I have it written right here. Croakers equal big trout. Not as a, as a reminder, as a fact. Uh, I've used croakers for flounder. I've used croakers for reds. Nobody thinks about using them for trout. Not a lot of people, at least I don't know them. As you may know, I used them this summer. Why? They were around. There was a lot of big trout around. And I did a little experimentation. See, what I do is I study what they're doing in Texas and Louisiana and, you know, the Gulf. They fish croakers over there for big trout. That's what they do. They're not using mullet. Okay? If they are, they're not talking about it. Every once in a while you see them. Yes, they use pogies. Okay? But um, just the other day, when I was out, and we're back and we're cleaning fish, I cut open one of the bigger trout. And what's he got in the stomach? A croaker. The, the thing about it is, yeah, mullet is easier sometimes. I mean, you can't hardly catch, you know, I don't, I don't see a whole lot of nice little finger mullet around right now. That's the reason why I'm kind of aching to go try the croaker thing. Is because I know where I can go get some croakers. About that big. Okay, we were even catching the other, uh, the other day when I was out, we were catching those little sand perch, a little silver sand perch like this, on a sheep's head spot, and they drove us out of there because they, they ate every bait. Oh my God, there's some good little baits too. It's stepping out of the ordinary, okay? I mean, especially now. I'm not going to be running around looking, trying to find mullet this big, you know, perfect mullet. But at the same time, I know where the croakers are. Go catch a whole well of those. Then go take them and put them in some trout spots. And your croakers are usually caught in the deeper water. Okay, they're all schooled up. Sometimes around massive structure. Okay. Take the croakers and put them where they don't belong. And I mean, that's what I did this summer. I was taking croakers and throwing them up in two feet of water. When's the last time you saw a six-inch croaker swimming around in two feet of water? And I'm telling you, when they were up in that two foot of water, they didn't last all that long. They got hit. They got hit by a trout. They got hit by uh, a couple things I couldn't even stop. Okay. I even went ahead and ordered a couple extra rods because my same rods that I float rig fish with have such that beautiful parabolic bend, them ugly stick striper rods. What I did is I ordered two more of those, and that's going to be what I'm going to be using for the croaker fishing, because number one, you don't want to pull the hook. Soft mouth fish, eating a big bait. You want plenty of give and take with a big giant trout on, okay? Uh, you can't yank and crank on. And it'll telegraph that bite. Because I noticed last summer when I was using the croakers, you really don't know exactly when to, to set the hook, let's say. Which it should be nothing more than, there it is, reel it on tight and just sweep. No setting the hooks, you know, you're not doing the Bill Dance, Roland Martin thing, screaming sun. Okay. Yeah, you can do that all day long with redfish or whatever. Well, rubber lips, but you really don't be wanting to be do that with no trout. So, I'm kind of aching to do that. And I'll give you a little hint. I mean, right now, um, the Navy ship is out of Atlantic Shipyard. At least it was when I was just there the last two, two trips I did. And that place is a croaker festival going on on the bottom. We, both days I was there, uh, just stopped in for a little while, see what was going on. You can't drop a piece of shrimp to the bottom without catching a croaker. Some of them were like this, okay, and some of them were like this. Those, I'm going to put in live well. And 
that's what I'm going to take that little guy right there, and I'm going to hook him and pitch him up to where he don't belong. That's the ticket. And as I said last summer, people would say, well, why are you using Kroger? Just use Mullet. Well, you know, sometimes the easiest path isn't always the most rewarding, okay? And um, I want to do something out of the ordinary. I'm taking what the guys in Texas, Louisiana, and all those areas that use croakers, I'm doing it because they're doing it, because there's a reason why they do it, is they catch big trout. I mean, come on, Texas has got, you know, that, that place is full of big trout. And when those dudes get serious, they're using croakers. And they're even talking, oh, you know, they catch so many big trout on the croakers that they got even this dispute going on there between croaker guys and lure guys and stuff like that. Oh my God, I wish we had that dispute. They actually sell croakers there in bait shops. I know in Louisiana they sell them. We can drag shrimp all the way from the west coast of Florida over to the east coast of Florida in trucks. Okay, but we don't have any uh, local shrimp. But for some reason we can't get croakers too. I remember years, or not years ago, just a year, a year ago maybe, I asked Wade, the local shrimp man one time, I said, you ever get a little croakers? Oh yeah, I get tons of them. I said, save a little bag of them for me or something, we'll, and we'll put them in a, the tank at uh, the bait shop. And he called me, or uh, I think one of the guys at the bait shops called me, at the bait shop, and he said, hey, Wade brought in your croakers. And I mean, this was like three hours later. Oh, they're all dead now. I don't know what that story was, but shrimp live, croakers die? Come on, I don't know what the deal was. I wasn't there. I was out in the boat fishing. Um, so, if you can catch those little croakers, those little silver trout, or not little silver trout, the little silver perch jobs that will drive you crazy in a bend of a creek, in a deep hole sometimes. There's just stacks of them down there. But one thing I leave alone is pinfish. We got tons of pinfish. And for some reason I've never done inshore. I haven't done diddly on pinfish inshore. Okay. But them croakers are sitting down at the bottom. And they're croaking. They're making noise. They're doing something. Okay. And that's what makes them such a superlative bait for big trout. And I really don't think that the trout here are that much different than the trout in the Gulf. Okay, I mean, I know I like big cheeseburgers. There's probably some dude over in India that looks like me. <laughs> and he likes big cheeseburgers too. So, I mean, come on, we're human, they're trout. So, uh, just give that a thought. And hopefully I'm going to be able to uh, do a little bit of this myself, maybe r and I got a charter on Thursday. We're probably going to stick to the standard operating procedure for trout, but you never know. Just remember, you know, I did really well on them last summer. It's a big, big trout. But then again, the other day we caught a nice trout on a shrimp. Cut him open. What's he got in his stomach? He's got a croaker. And I'm going to post a picture here with this video of a trout that really wasn't all that big. I mean, it was a good sized fish with a huge croaker in his belly. Okay, just in case you didn't catch it on the blog reports. All right, well, thanks for watching. And that's just a Jetty Wolf thought of the day.